I am going to be bringing you a tutorial on something I've actually never done before, so this um, should be interesting. Um, you're going to get to see any of the problems I've run into as I go along, but I'm talking about doing a two, possibly three layer chalk painted desk, which actually I'm doing a vanity, and um, I'm starting with a dark color chalk paint, and then after that dries, I'm going to go over it um, with a completely different color, different color family, and then at the end, I'll go back over it with a third coat that um, hopefully is going to bring it all together, and we're going to get a distressed look um, without having to sand. I'm going to also probably use um, an antiquing glaze. Uh, and see how that turns out. Like I said, this is all new. I've done a lot of furniture um, with chalk paint, but just usually small tables, signs, and things like that. But I'm gonna try this big piece of furniture and see how it goes. And um, I wanted to show y'all how we did that. Uh, I do wanna remind y'all to go over to um, Facebook and like us on Facebook at Under a Texas Sky. And um, be sure and subscribe to our YouTube channel. I think it's up in this corner. Maybe it's opposite in this corner. There's a letter, a little number, uh, excuse me, a letter I. Just click that and it'll take you to the website under a TexasSky.com, which is where we have all of our projects and everything that we're doing. Um, I'm also on this particular project going to attempt to do a rub on transfer. Um, those are so beautiful on furniture, and um, I've recently become a distributor for redesign uh, by Prima and there's a whole bunch of rub-on designs transfers that I'll be selling from my website and uh, you'll be able to link that from underatexasky.com but um, Facebook's a real good place to start I'm filming tonight without the mean man again um, he is in California this time and um, so it's probably going to be some awkward shots and things like that, but if y'all watch me very much on any of my videos, you know that we just wing it and see how it goes, and, um, and that's just what we do. Now, I'm kind of controlling everything from my phone here that's on this desk. I'm going to break away for just a second so we can get focused on to the piece of furniture, and um, I'll tell you what I'm using, and we'll, we're going to try um, to get the first coat on, so we're going to see how that happens. The paint that I'm going to be using is this Rust-Oleum chalked paint, and um, I just have ordered it on Amazon. I've done another couple of tables with it, and um, it's just as good as any chalk paint that I've used. Um, it's way less expensive. I think I gave probably $18 or so for this um, for this paint, but just be sure you've got it stirred up really well. And uh, I'm going to pour it up. I'm just going to pour it in this cup a little bit instead of dipping it right out of the can. Um, I don't know if there's anything wrong with doing it that way. Boy, look how pretty that is. That is, that's a really pretty color. Um, but anyway, I don't, you know, like I said, I don't know if, if it makes a difference, you know, whether or not you pour it up. But I'm just going to do that. And it always makes such a mess. That's why I like, really like those pour spouts that you can get, which I clearly don't have. And then it's all over the can lid, and then it just rushes all down. Lord have mercy. And what y'all are seeing as you look around is um, our house. If you follow me at all at undertexasky.com, you know that we have recently purchased a 1901 Victorian farmhouse, and we're in the process of doing a massive renovation um, We've gotten the kitchen done and the craft room is done. The master bath is done. If you'll go to undertexasky.com, if you're the slightest bit interested in what's going on with the renovation, you can see everything that we've done. So, um, but let's get right to this. Now on my piece, I did clean it. I cleaned it really well. And then I lightly sanded it. Um, it looks like maybe somebody at some point had tried to remove the finish or something. Um, I'm not sure, but it felt really weird when I was cleaning it. And so I'm not sure exactly what the situation is, but um, hopefully this is going to work. Like I said, I cleaned it and lightly sanded it. You're not supposed to have to lightly sand things. Oh, there was, I just, 
just noticed on that picture, y'all just saw my big mug go by. Sorry. Um, let me move this over here so I can make sure y'all can see what we're doing. But it's my understanding when we're doing this first coat, it doesn't have to be heavy coverage. Um, I don't think it's quite a dry brush um, technique, but um, I'm going to go ahead and dab some of that off. We're just going to get started and just see what happens. Um, I'm using one of these nifty um, uh, chalk paint brushes that loads up really well. And uh, it, uh, see, I got it really thick right here, so I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. My understanding that it's cool to get it thicker in some places than in others. And y'all know, I don't claim to be an expert on this at all. Like I said, you know, we wing it. It's how we, it's how we roll. We just wing it, and uh, a lot of times we just we just hope for the best <laughs> most of the time. The great thing about it is most of the time things work out. I'll make sure I get under this little loop-de-loop. -loop. This is a really nice piece of furniture. I was looking for a vanity um, for our master bedroom, which hopefully we'll have done in the next couple of weeks. We've got a board and batten wall that we've just done, and uh, we're waiting to get the, um, the paint on that wall as well as other walls. Okay, I'm just going to dip in to my paint. So y'all see what I'm doing here. And then I'm going to dab quite a bit of it off so I don't get that heavy, um, that heavy feeling again. I'm going to move the camera over this way some so y'all can see. Sorry, don't get a whiplash. I'm going to continue doing what I'm doing, what I had been doing. Just kind of... There's a better place to start. I don't know if there is or not. There might be. If so, um, I wish I could tell you what it was, but I can't because I don't. I honestly don't know. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and cover this right here. Even though the drawer is gonna go in here and cover that up for the most part. I'm going to continue to remove the, some paint from over here, and uh, apparently it it's, gets pretty ugly before it gets better. And you can see this brush is, this brush is pretty dry at this point. I'm going to go back in to my paint and dab on a little bit more. And I'm not loading up heavy at all. lid a little bit. I've got a board under this uh, table, so I'm not going to ruin my floors any worse than they already are. If you look around, you can see what a hot mess things are around here. Um, it, is, it is a hot mess. Like I said, we're in the middle of this huge renovation that uh, has really been more than what we ever thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to be super fun and everything. It's, it's a lot of things. I wouldn't necessarily classify super fun as one of them. Okay, y'all can see I'm continuing. Man, this color is really pretty. And I gotta tell you, my legs, my thighs are on fire. continue on. I'm not going to make y'all watch this whole time. Getting in these grooves is just a whole nother thing altogether, but I want to get in there because that's where the magic is going to happen um, when we get the antiquing glaze on there. Um, and I would, normally I have always used antiquing wax, but um, I want to put a poly coat on top of this table 
um, because it's, you know, it's gonna, I'm gonna be using it where I put my makeup on and everything, and um, I just don't, I, I want it to be super tough. Not that a wax sealer's not tough, but it's really not super tough. Um, and when you do a wax sealer, wax has to be redone. Um, it doesn't last forever. You have to redo that every few months. And so, um, I don't want to have to be doing that. I have no idea how that angle looked at me doing that. I hope everything is fine. But like I said, I'm going to continue on with this. And then um, when I'm done, I'll come back and show you um, how the whole thing looks before we go to the next coat. Now, this is the next morning. Um, I did this table, I uh, did that first coat at about eight o'clock last night. And uh, so I just went ahead and, you know, shut everything down, let it dry. Wanted to give you a close up look at um, what, what the piece looks like. I mean, it's really rough. Uh, there's some of the actual wood showing through still. Um, I've got the drawers over there. I did a little bit of taping, um, but not a whole lot because I'm just making this for myself. Now, if I were making this to sell, um, I would probably be a little more careful about taping parts off so everything is neat and clean on the inside um, and not just on the outside. But like I said, I'm making it for me, so I'm not, I'm not too terribly worried about that. Um, but now I'm gonna go ahead and take a second to set my phone up so I can see what we're doing here. And then I'm gonna show you the coat we're gonna put on next that has me real nervous. The paint that I'm going to use for this second layer, um, to, you know, it's, it's kind of daring. It's a coral color. Um, I, I didn't get this in the Rust-Oleum. This is called Vignettes. I, I don't know if this is a paint that y'all can, where y'all can purchase it. I actually purchased it at a craft uh, mall up in Waco. And so um, I'm not sure how readily available it is, but this is a super popular color. So I'm sure that you'll be able to find it. Um, I went ahead and poured it up in my cup, just like I had done the, the gray paint, the charcoal paint, excuse me. And uh, I did mix a little bit of water in it because uh, I really want this layer to not be really heavy. Um, I don't know if I, if y'all can see the consistency here. Um, I could probably zoom in a little bit and show you. Let's see. So you can see how it's dribbling off of this knife that I used to stir it up. So it's it's not it's it's thick, but it's not as thick as it would have been otherwise. Um, I did go over a couple of spots on this table first thing, and I got um, the sanding block and I sanded down any ridges and things like that that I could feel were that were sticking up, you know, really high. And then I went over it with a tack cloth and made sure that I got all of that residue from the sanding off of the table because I do want this to go on smoothly. Um, I'm gonna run over and um, grab my brush, adjust the camera, and then um, we will start painting and I'm gonna show you how we're gonna get that done and cross our fingers that it's not gonna be just hideous. I am going to start on the base part and do the top last. This works out really well because I need to balance myself while I'm doing this. This is really hard for me to be down on my, um, squatted down like this on my legs, but um, I, I wanna be able to hold on to something. If I paint this first, I'll have my handprints all over it. So that's one of the reasons why I'm starting on the base first. There's no other um, just real secret reason why I'm doing that. Here's my paint. I'm gonna go ahead and dab my brush into the paint. And I am doing a sort of dry um, brush technique. So after you get your paint on the brush, and I, there's some of the bristles that are coming out a little bit, go ahead and dab it off. And so it almost looks dry. Um, and then we're gonna start just doing our random brush strokes. Wow, this looks really pink against this gray. I'm gonna go ahead and just randomly do that. Let's see. 
even if I'm going in different directions with the brush, it's okay. Because remember, this is not our last coat. I've got a gray, a lighter gray color that we're going to come in and use on our last coat. I'm going to go ahead and unload this brush onto the piece right here. I want to be sure that y'all can see what I'm doing. I'm going to go ahead and grab some more paint. And I'm not really plunging it into the paint. I'm just tapping it on the surface of the paint. And then I'm dabbing it off on my paper towel. And remember, your first stroke is always going to be the one with the most paint loaded on it. So you may want to be careful when you first touch the piece. You might want to start on the outside and work your way in. You see I'm just doing random strokes. I think that actually looks really pretty at this point. And if you see anything glaring, I hate to walk in front of y'all, but I have to. And you do want it to be, you know, you don't want to have any big globs. It can be darker in areas, but just be sure there's not super globs of paint in whatever area. Even though you are going to be going over this with one more coat and that last coat you're going to want to be, you know, you're going to be more precise with the last coat because it's going to be the coat that's actually seen. I've got a kind of a glob on this leg. I'm going to go ahead and work out. Hope y'all are being able to see exactly how this is going on. The biggest thing um, that I can say when you're doing this is don't be afraid. You know, don't don't be afraid of, of messing something up. I mean, definitely start on a piece that you're wanting to keep. Um, but I mean, it's it's not rocket science and. Um, and if you do make some sort of horrible, you know, mistake, you can always just paint over it. Um, <clears throat> that is the beauty part about the chalk paint. Chalk paint has really good coverage. And uh, if you feel like you've made an error, then go ahead and just paint over it. It's pretty easy uh, to do. I mean, it'll be frustrating, don't get me wrong, because you, you don't want to have to start over. but. Um, but this isn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. I really thought the way this coral looks, you can see how, how pink it looks on the piece, which is kind of nice. Um, it's not what I expected, and uh, I like it. So I'm going to continue on covering the rest of this piece. Um, and I think you've got the gist of what's what's happening here and uh, you don't have to watch me just do the whole the whole thing see how that happened that's so much thicker right there so I'm gonna go ahead and stretch it out a little bit because that was my first um, stroke so now I can kind of blend that out which is fine I mean because you really do want it darker in some areas lighter in others and you want you want it to be random and uh, there, I think it's, it's pretty random. So I'm gonna go ahead and continue working on this and then um, when I come back, I'll show you the piece when it's covered with the second layer and then we will let it dry and we'll start working on the third. So the vanity has been drying for about two hours now. So I'm about to put the last coat on it. We're just gonna cross our fingers and hope that it, that it goes okay. Um, the last coat I'm putting on here is a gray. It's this Rust-Oleum chalked paint um, called Country Gray. So that's going to be the coat I put on top. I've already got it poured up in my cup. I've already got some of it on the brush from where I kind of wiped it off. Um, I'm going to go and maneuver the camera and so y'all can see what I'm doing. And we're going to go ahead and I'm going to show you the how it looks right now. 
um, dry, and then we'll go ahead. Oh, I got paint all over me. I'll go ahead and start painting, and, and we'll see what happens. And I'm hoping you can see the color. I guess looks pretty good. It's it looks kind of purpley. Um, with that coral, which looks pink, on top of the uh, charcoal, um, but it, it, you know, I think it looks, I think it looks pretty cool like that. I mean, you could actually do some finish work on it, um, you know, put your top coats or whatever, and have a really cute vanity um, with it, like it is. But we're going to go one more step, I'm gonna move this stuff off, and we are going to do exactly what we did last time. And I'm going to start on the bottom part. I'm still going to use kind of a dry brush um, on this. Um, I'm probably going to have some, some heavier coverage. Um, I'm going to come over on this side to start because I want you all to be able to see what I'm doing. And all right, here we go. Ooh, that's a nice color. Just painting. Like I said, it's a little bit of a dry brush, but it is definitely heavier than what I did the other coats. So that is my dog in there playing with the toy. Sorry. They get real excited when they can squeak it. You can see I'm going a little bit heavier in most of the areas. And coverage is nice. This, this is a really nice paint. I mean, it flows on well. And uh, I, like, I like the coverage. side so you don't see what I'm doing. The color does look kind of weird on the camera. Um, I'm not sure why that is. I hate to be in your way while I'm doing this. I mean like I said y'all I you know I am no expert on any of this. I just uh, I do exactly what y'all do. I get on Pinterest I watch videos and uh, I see how other people do it. Usually I'll watch more than one so I can, you know, sometimes people have different opinions on how to approach things and uh, I like some people's technique um, more than others sometimes and, uh, and so I go with that. But that's really what you have to do and then you just, you just gotta try it, you know? Um, and we've painted much smaller pieces and um, so you know this isn't this isn't the first piece that I've painted but it's definitely the first time I've ever tried this sort of distressing I've just recently got into the point where I'm doing sanding where I'll paint a piece and then I'll just sand where you can see the original finish um, and I've done a couple of tables that are absolutely beautiful um, like that, but I didn't want to do that with this one. And a lot of times I use um, antiquing wax, and I love antiquing wax and um, the depth that it gives the pieces that I paint. And I am going to do an antiquing glaze on this, I think. Um, I just have to uh, wait till I get to that point, but I really, I'm thinking I'm going to do an antiquing glaze on this after everything is all finished. But y'all can see here how I'm doing this, kind of going with the grain. Um, and I'm gonna continue to paint and uh, then I will be back once we get to the point where we're about done. And then we'll be talking about the um, the poly coat we're going to put on first before we go with the antiquing glaze and because uh, you have to do that apparently when you use the glaze if you don't do your poly coat first the glaze will really absorb into your paint because 
because um, the chalk paint's really thirsty. And you can't wax and then use a glaze because the glaze does apparently have to have something to grab onto. So um, that's just research that I've done online and you know, I mean, I guess the internet is not necessarily always right, but I'm just gonna follow that advice. And, uh, but we'll be back once I get it all finished and we'll see where we are and we'll see how everything turns out. Okay, y'all, so um, since you saw me last, um, I have actually gotten the top coat on the piece and I do have one coat of um, the poly on top of it and I'm using this urethane, let's see, um, from um, also from Rust-Oleum, I think. Um, yeah, it's Rustolian also, and it's a water base, and uh, I saw a lot of really good reviews for it, and so that's what I used, but before, I thought, you know, I'm going to go ahead and do a second coat, and before I did that, I wanted to show you what the first coat ended up looking like, and of course, I'm operating the camera from where I am. I can't use my phone because the battery's dead, and, um, and it's late at night, and y'all probably think I'm crazy, and I might be, but... The mean man's still out of town and I don't sleep at night. So um, I thought, you know, I'm gonna go ahead and do this. That'll free me up tomorrow for a manicure, which I'm in desperate need of. So anyway, that's basically how everything looks. I think it came out really nicely. You know, there's some irregularities. Um, this um, furniture, it wasn't a perfect piece of furniture, but um, I think that it turned out really nicely and the color looks a little bit off. It's much more gray than blue, um, but you can on this one, you can kind of see the coral um, shining through, which I think is pretty cool. Okay, so I'm back with the antiquing wax, which is this right here. It's Valspar um, antiquing wax and um, it, of course I didn't bring over here, dead gum. I'm just going to scoot over here and get this opener. Oh, Lord. Okay. So, the antiquing wax goes on with a super stiff brush. I use this um, square brush. I don't know. I don't know what it's specifically made for, but that's what I use. Um, to apply the antiquing wax. And like I said, I don't know how this is gonna work because I do have a coat of poly on here. I don't know if it'll if it'll stay. I don't know what's gonna happen, but we're gonna give it a try. Um, and I just dip that. Y'all can see what this looks like. And I'm gonna come over here and kind of just put it in here. And then I'm going to wipe kind of to the middle. Just a little bit of glaze on this cloth. Y'all can see what I'm doing. I'm going to zoom in. Let me zoom in some more. Okay. There's a whole lot of that coral right there. Go ahead and nope, that's not the brush that I want. Oh, I got something on the floor. Me man will kill me. Okay, I got it. It was just glazed. Nobody panic. I'm gonna kind of go in these little grooves right here. That these are really deep. I mean, it's really these are deeper than channels that I've encountered on other kinds of piece of furniture. Usually I can get right in there with the paintbrush and um, fill those in, but I couldn't this time. They just would not fill in. And so you could really see the actual original wood that was in there, um, which I thought was kind of interesting. I'm go ahead and That 
looks kind of neat. See, I like that. I like the way this is turning out, the way it's looking. I think that it's, um, it's got a nice kind of aged look in there. You zoom way in so y'all can see a little close up like where we want to look because I can't move the camera up and down from here, but I can zoom in. Yeah, look at that. Well, that's not what y'all want to see. It's below that. There we go. Down there, but I can go ahead and put some right here. some all around this. You see, I'm, I mean, I'm super randomly doing this, but you've got a little bit of time to kind of move this wax around, which is nice. It is unforgiving. No, it's forgiving, not unforgiving until I haven't gotten any sleep in the past few days. There we go. I like how that's looking. What do y'all think? Y'all liking that? Of course, I can't hear you, but y'all can please leave comments for me. I love to read your comments, you guys. Just make my life so nice, and I love the encouragement that y'all give. It really, um, it really makes a difference. Um, okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to work on the rest of this piece. Um, I'll get it. I'll get all the. Um, waxing done, the antiquing wax um, done, and then um, I'll have everything done. And when we get back, I'll be able to show y'all what we've gotten done. It'll be finished, and um, I'm gonna put an applique on top of here, a rub-on transfer. Um, before I do that, I will come back and show you how we get that done, and uh, I'll get this done, and then I'll be back. So I went ahead and finished the um, antiquing wax layer last night and I absolutely love how it turned out. Oh, I'll look at it a little bit closer. Well, there we go. You can see kind of how the three layers are coming through and uh, I think it looks really really nice and it also um, is it feels really solid. Um, you know, like I said, I was a little leery about putting the wax coat on after um, the first coat of the poly, but it, you know, it looks great. So I'm assuming everything is fine. It feels great. It feels solid. And so um, I'm thinking we are good to go. So that is an example, or this is an example of how you do three layers. I did use chalk paint on this vanity. Remember, I started with this Rust-Oleum um, charcoal color chalk paint. And then the second coat, I went with this Vignettes coral color with a little bit of water mixed in. And remember when we put it on, we did three very light coats. We basically dry brushed the dark coat on first, did not give it full coverage or complete coverage, came back with the Vignette with a little bit of water, dry brush that on again not full coverage we didn't cover every inch of the vanity and then we put our third coat of the country gray rust-oleum chalk paint and uh I, and on that i did give heavier coverage but i didn't cover it completely because what would be the point so i did still dab my brush when I went on, I just covered things a little bit more fully, but in areas that there would be distressing, because really that's the point of this. You wanna, I wanted to distress this vanity, but I didn't wanna have to sand the areas to get it uh, distressed. So in those areas where um, there's gonna be 
more wear, and that's just gonna be your raised areas mostly, I went lighter with my top coat of paint. So you can actually see that there, the other colors are kind of are showing through. And then finally, to give it ultimately a really distressed look, which really does kind of mean worn or kind of dirty or, you know, that kind of um, dirt that you can't wash off um, that really makes the piece look aged. I went, now this is the glaze. I did not use the glaze. I used the Valspar, I'm going to grab it. I used the Valspar Antiquing Wax. And I applied this. Remember, it's much thicker than the glaze. And I applied it with one of these square, stiff brushes. And uh, I just went into those areas, the edges, areas where I wanted the distressing. I let it sit for a couple seconds. And then I came back with a soft, rag and just wiped off the excess you know the things that i didn't want where i wanted it to gather in some areas i very lightly wiped away the outside and left that on the inside i did it with the legs all of the grooves which there are you know these are deep grooves all of those grooves i went ahead and i filled that in with the antiquing wax and then wiped that away um, now, actually, you know what? I skipped a step. I skipped telling you a step. Before I went with the antiquing wax, I um, put a top coat of the, um, it's a, it's a Rust-Oleum product. It's a water-based top coat. And so it was a poly. Uh, I don't know um, specifically. It's urethane. And uh, so anyway, I went over that first, and then I put the antiquing wax on top of that. And I've seen places that said you're not supposed to do it that way. I did it that way and my wax is not, I mean, it's set overnight and it is set. Um, it's probably gonna take, you know, a couple weeks, I would think, probably for it to really cure, but it is, it is good to go. And then finally what I'm gonna do, um, I, I did the redesign uh, from Prima transfer on top and I'm going to put a coat of the poly on top of that just to make sure that it is going to be safe and protected um, through the years because I don't expect to, to do this again. Um, and so I'm definitely going to use the water-based poly. Um, that got great reviews on Amazon. That's why I got it. I don't, I don't represent Rust-Oleum products or get paid by them, but I read that it was a really good product and that's why I purchased it. So, I, if, uh, I hope y'all enjoyed this tutorial. I know it was really wonky because the mean man is not here and I had to do the recording by myself and I apologize for that. But I had a whole week um, of him being gone and I couldn't just not do anything. And I had this in my mind to do. I wanted to get this vanity done because hopefully our master bedroom is going to be finished um, in another couple of weeks. So be sure and go by undertexassky.com, um, subscribe to my channel. Subscribe to my Facebook because anytime I post something to UnderTexasSky.com, I put a link on Facebook. So go and like my page, Under Texas Sky, on Facebook. Um, check out my Instagram because I'm using a lot, a lot of Instagram stories that's showing, you know, how I'm doing stuff. Not just this, but I've made some signs. I've made frames for signs. I'm showing that, and I do it on Instagram. And um, and my Instagram name is under underscore a underscore texas underscore sky and so that's how you find me on instagram and you'll um, go ahead and subscribe there because i mean we've got these three pieces of social media working my, you know my blog facebook and instagram and uh you're going to miss things if you don't go ahead and subscribe to all three of them if you want you know, to be informed whenever we do things or if you're interested in seeing what we've got going on. I sure do appreciate y'all, um, you know, coming along this ride with me and being patient with me. And I'm hoping that I'm showing you things that, um, that are useful and valuable to you. Um, thank you so much for tuning in and for watching. Be sure on Under Texas Sky, um, there is a link that says store. And that's where these transfers um, will be if you're interested in purchasing them. Like I said, at first, I just have, you know, just have a handful of them. And I will expand that if it looks like people are going to be interested in purchasing them. I just didn't want to make a huge investment um, at, the, at the start. So I really appreciate y'all. Um, check out UnderTexasSky.com. And y'all have a blessed day. And uh, God bless you with many blessings.